How's everybody doing? Yeah. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Alright, alright. So my name is Clint Smith. Um, and I really appreciate the poem who came up right before me because um, one, that poem was just. Let's give a round of applause for that. Yeah. I'm someone who very much believes in, in art uh, playing a meaningful role as the catalyst for social change. Um, I believe that the dialogue it sparks in the way it puts you. Uh, into this perspective and gives kind of like a radical exercise in empathy um, is what our world needs and what ultimately allows us to translate emotion into action. Uh, so I really appreciate that. And on that note, I'm going to start with this poem uh, in which I seek to do the same thing. As a child, my father would tell me stories of ancient Egyptian warriors traveling for endless days and nights across infinite desert plains, showing signs of endurance and bravery I could only dream of emulating. He would tell me that upon their return home, these warriors would be welcomed with a feast worthy of their bravery on the battlefield. Years later, as a teacher in Greater Washington, D.C., I too now find myself traversing a desert, though it is not the one I envisioned, a food desert. It's categorized as a poor urban area where residents cannot afford or are not given access to healthy foods and grocery stores. Every day at 2.45, I watch my students hop on the leaking submarine of a school bus, every block bringing them deeper into an ocean where the only fish they find are fried, recruits and vegetables are playing an everlasting game of hide and go seek because there are no grocery stores here. Just liquor stores and Popeyes, Dunkin' Donuts and 7-Elevens, children born into a neighborhood that feels more pollution than solution, it is then I realize that I am not too far from the deserts I once dreamed of. See, whether Anacostia or the Sahara, it doesn't make much difference because to Whole Foods, Southeast DC is no different than the Serengeti to them. Brown skin little boys like my students are nothing more than walking cacti, just a piece of scenery this world has taught everyone to stay away from. Brianna literally has a landfill in her backyard, so she has a hard time convincing herself the world doesn't just think she's trash. Restaurants come and dump the remains of food she'll never be able to afford to eat. Three steps from her back door, Jose eats fast food five days a week because his mother works three jobs to take care of six kids and only sees her son when she arrives home from work at the same time he's leaving for school. He has gotten so big that the excess fat bumps beneath his skin and puts added pressure on his joints. His knees are literally crumbling under the weight of this world of living. Watched her father shot two feet from her front porch. She wants nothing more than to go outside and play at the park after school, but gun violence has made a miracle round feel more like Russian roulette, so she doesn't go outside. Simply eats any processed food from the cabinet that will last long enough to prevent her from leaving the house too often. These are my students, my warriors, fighting a battle against an enemy they cannot clearly see. These kings and queens meant to feast, not to fester, but their zip code has already told them that their life expectancies are 30 years shorter than the county seven miles away. I can see the faults of my own ancestry shaking in their eyes. Diabetes and high blood pressure run through the roots of my family tree. Heart disease is as much a part of my history as shackles and segregation. So from my father's kidney transplant to Olivia's asthma, these things are more than mere coincidence. Both grew up in places more accustomed to gunshots than gardens. So tell me place doesn't matter. That the neighborhoods that are predominantly healthy aren't the same ones that are predominantly healthy. Because when you're not choosing between buying your medicine and your groceries, health doesn't have to be a luxury. Doesn't have to be an abstract concept presented in academic journals and policy briefs. My students overcome more every day than I will in my lifetime. They are the roses that grew from the concrete, the budding oasis in the heart of the desert, and their lives are worth far much more than the things that this world has fed them.